Let's talk about some probabilities. The easiest way to think about probabilities and the idea of mutually exclusive events is to take a simple example like drawing one card from a standard deck of well-shuffled cards. So let's find a deck. All right, we're shuffled. So now if I lay out these 52 cards and I pick one at random, what's the probability that I end up with the Ace of Hearts? Well, this one wasn't it. The probability is just one out of 52. That much is pretty obvious. If I repeat the experiment and I say, well, what's the probability now? I'm not curious about the probability of Ace of Hearts, but for King of Diamonds, what's the probability? Well, again, it's one out of 52. There is only one King of Diamonds in this whole deck. Now, let me ask you a secondary question. If I was to shuffle the deck, lay them out in front of me and pick at random, what is the probability that the card I pick is either an Ace of Hearts or a King of Diamonds? Well, there are two good options and I don't know if this one is either of those, but the overall probability will be two out of 52. It's just the sum of the two choices. Now that worked out because those two choices were mutually exclusive. It would be impossible for the card that I pick to be both the Ace of Hearts and the King of Diamonds at the same time. It's just one card. So now let's phrase a more general question. Again, suppose that I'm just picking one card from a shuffled deck of 52 cards. And I ask, what is the probability that the card I pick is an Ace? Well, it could be an ace of hearts, or an ace of spades, or an ace of diamonds, or an ace of clubs. So there are four good choices, and that means that my probability is four out of 52. If I then ask what is the probability that the card I end up with was a heart, now I have to think about all the different options, and there's a two, a three, all the way up to 10, and there's also jack and queen and king, and ace. So that gives me 13 out of 52. Okay, now let's ask the similar question, where we say, what is the probability that the card that I pick is either an ace or a heart? You may be tempted to just go ahead and write four out of 52 plus 13 out of 52, but that would be wrong. The reason why it's wrong is because the ace of hearts got counted twice, once as being an ace and once as being a heart. So let's see why this works. Let's think about the set of all the outcomes which give us an ace. And what we're gonna do is actually draw a Venn diagram where in the box we have all 52 cards. The blob on the left-hand side just represents all the ace cards. And then let's draw another blob which represents all of the heart cards. Now notice that I've have those overlapping. We know that there are actually four aces in total and there are 13 hearts in total but there's one ace of hearts. So that is in the intersection, in that overlap zone. What that means is that there are three other aces, which are not hearts, and there are 12 other hearts, which are not aces. So that's the Venn diagram, which explains the example. Now, if I ask the question, what is the probability that my card is an ace or a hearts? All I have to do is go ahead and add up anything that belongs to one of those things, one of those pieces. That's the three, the one, and the 12. And what do I get? 16 out of 52. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. Now we see this is the correct probability, and by the way, that's roughly 30.8%. In general, if we have two events, let's call them A and B, and we want to know the probability that A or B happens, that's equal to the probability that A happens plus the probability that B happens minus the probability that A and B both happen. If we think about this equation in terms of the example we just saw, this is like saying the probability that the card we pick is a ace or a heart is going to be equal to the probability that's an ace plus the probability that's a heart minus the probability that it's both, so it's an ace of hearts. And that's exactly what we see. That gives us four out of 52 plus 13 out of 52 minus one out of 52. Notice we get the same result. Let's see why this makes sense in terms of the Venn diagram. Well, if we think about calculating up all the things that belong to A, let's shade those in, and we've counted them all once. Now we add up all the things that belong to B, in this case hearts, and we shade that up. We count all those things once as well. But notice something, anything that was in the intersection got counted twice and that's no good, we need to remove that count once so that we've counted those things only once. 
we need to make sure that everything in the set we have is counted exactly once. That's why this equation makes sense. So you may have heard that if you have two events A and B which are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. The reason why this is is because if you think about the Venn diagram, mutually exclusive means that there's no overlap. So really all we're doing is using the regular old equation and just subtracting zero because their intersection is nothing. So in general, all you need to remember is the big equation in the purple box. And that tells you how to deal with either mutually exclusive events or events that are not mutually exclusive. Don't forget to subscribe for video updates. And if you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. So the next time that you pick up a deck of cards, remember it's all about statistics. The reason why I've written down most of it is because I want to show you a key way to remember it. If you have log base b of a number n and base b is not something on your calculator, so you want to change the...